Hello and welcome to Box the Talk. I'm Shekhar Gupta in what might be described either as a very special part of India or a very special part, a tiny part of America and India. Uh, in the Roosevelt House, the home of the American ambassador for more than 50 years now. My guest today, Ambassador Nancy Powell. Welcome to Roosevelt House. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we could, we could describe you, if you were born in this country, as a mid midnight's child. <laughs> Born, in, to, born I, in 1947. I used to say I was as old as India, and someone accused me of being 5,000 years old. So I <laughs> well, <kept saying> well <laughs> I remember what Rajiv, Rajiv Gandhi said, we are a new nation, but an old civilization. So you, you can decide where to start. And this is a special corner for you. You've now set up uh, Eleanor Roosevelt's bust. The first, the uh, a little history on this. The first occupant of Roosevelt House, uh, Ambassador John Kenneth Galbraith, brought this, the bust of Franklin Roosevelt, for whom he had worked during the 1930s. And one of his Republican successors brought the one of Theodore Roosevelt, who was a Republican. And as the first woman American ambassador, we, we, I brought Eleanor. That's the one that towers over the other two, <laughs> yes. Because she had a special India connection. She had a, 60 years ago, she came to India on a two-month visit. She stayed with uh, Prime Minister Nehru and his sister, and went all over India, and particularly focused on children in India. And part of her trip was uh, going to eventually help es establish UNICEF's continuation. Um, and uh, she had a, a, such a good time on the trip that she wrote a book about her experience and called it uh, Awakening India. You were here. Uh as a political counselor, that's when we got to know Hello, each other. Okay. Yes, uh, when Narsim Mara was prime minister and Dr. Manmohan Singh was finance minister. I came to Calcutta first in 1992, yes. and uh, <clears throat> remember that the, finan the now finance minister came and spoke at the American Center about the reforms. Right. And it was a period where India was uh, making enormous changes, and American business said, oh, we have to look at India. We're looking at it in a different way. I now come back almost 20 years later and find the dramatic changes that have occurred in our relationship and in India's economy and the growth of the economy that's allowed people to move up uh, into the middle class. And quite extraordinary how much has changed in 20 and, and years. And how, how similar does the debate still look, 1992, 93, and now? I, I, I mean, think Parliament getting stalled every day on FDI. And I think... Uh, the fact that the parliament debates these issues is something that we share. Uh, we continue to I mean, you, you, have a you have a stalled parliament in different ways. <laughs> Both of our parliaments take their obligations uh, very, very seriously to represent the views of their constituents, to talk about issues that are uh, very, very keen and, and very important to people. The FDI issue is a little different in the United States in that it doesn't involve foreign direct investment. But well, the, it's outsourcing. Outsourcing is the U.S. equivalent. Outsourcing is the of, equivalent. Uh, and both of, of them FDI. have both economic issues, but they also have emotive issues. As, a, as the American ambassador here, who knows this country better than <laughs> certainly most journalists in India, uh, I'm not even uh, making a comparison with fellow diplomats. How do you look at what's happened lately, particularly with, uh, with the so-called Walmart uh, revelations or disclosures of lobbying? Uh, I, I think they... Do you, do you sit back and say this will pass? What's the view? I mean, no, the, view, I... the view in parliament is that all this money was spent to bribe Indian politicians, bureaucrats, journalists. I, I think there's a, a couple important points to make on this from the <clears throat> U.S. side. Um, what has happened is that uh, the accusations that this mom money was bribery, uh, what it is is lobbying. And in the United States, those are two very separate things. Bribery of foreign officials, whether they are officials or others, is a Foreign Corrupt Practices it's Act. A, it's a serious crime. It's a serious crime. <clears throat> and any uh, allegations or investigation by the company, and Walmart has indicated that they're doing one, uh, our Department of Justice and the Securities and Exchange Commission will look at that. But what played out yesterday is a totally separate issue. And this is a requirement that dates from 1995. Lobbying in the U.S. is different. Um, and it's regulated. It's regulated, <clears throat> and it's the effort is to make it transparent. Um, we have 
organizations, companies, NGOs, um, associations that put forward through lobbyists their ideas for legislation, for executive orders, for uh, policy making. And this is recognized as a part of our decision making, both on the executive branch and on the legislative branch. We also recognize that there were some abuses of it. Uh, enormous amounts of money have been spent on it. Uh, and in, starting in 1995 and then amended uh, with new legislation in 2007, we now require lobbyists to register. And they tell us their names, uh, whether it's a company or an individual. They tell us the issues that they're lobbying on. And they tell us um, how much money they've spent. And this is what um, was in the report that played out uh, in the news. Um, Walmart has spoken <coughs> and issued their statement, and it's I'll a, let a, them speak for themselves. It's a mandatory disclosure. It's a mandatory disclosure, and it's one that uh, is, is looked at to see whether it uh, is done correctly. Sorry. There's a companion piece that government officials who deal with lobbyists as part of their jobs have certain uh, limits on what they can accept in the way of a, a lunch or... Uh, any kind of a gift. Those were some of the abuses. So it, it's on both the government side and I, on the. I think the worry is that side. worry that those ro those rules haven't been laid out here. The other point I would make on this is that these uh, regulations and the disclosure are for expenses in the United States. Right. Um, they can include office expenses. They can include salaries. They can include uh, research. It includes brochures that might be developed to give to policymakers on. So these these expenses, twenty five million dollars, do not include anything spent in India. That's my understanding. I, I would defer to Walmart on the particulars of their case, but it is uh, the requirement is on what is spent in the in United America. States, and it's um, done to make sure that uh, I think Walmart had something like eighty items that they were using the $25 million for. Uh, nine general categories, uh, India, FDI was one uh, within one of those nine, but it was one of 80 issues that they would have approached US government officials, policy makers on. And uh, sure, they have not uh, certainly. So, so this is, this is uh, for clarity, this is not disclosure of monies paid in India. This is not a disclosure of bribes. No. Right. Uh, because, no, because nobody discloses bribes. This is a disclosure of lobbies. But there is another, a investigation. another investigation and a requirement to report any indications that there might be a problem. Again, Walmart has self-identified that they believe they may have issues in a number of countries, including India, and they have conducted their own, are, are conducting their own investigation, but our Department of Justice and the Security and Exchange Commission will also and there take you have a, a look you at you have it. a tough law. We have a very tough about law. About your companies indulging in corruption over if they did. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for retina display, full screen view, faster response time, and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.